Hi everyone, it's Dr. Fan here talking about gastric outlet obstruction today. Gastric outlet obstruction, often shortened to GOO, is the obstruction of the stomach, typically at the level of the gastric pylorus or the duodenum, which are the narrowest points at the end of the stomach. The causes of gastric outlet obstruction can be divided into intraluminal, mural, and extraluminal. Intraluminal lesions sit inside the lumen. These include benign causes such as impacted food material, known as bazoa, ulcers, strictures, and polyps, as well as malignant causes being gastric cancer or duodenal cancer. Mural lesions grow directly from inside the wall of the stomach or duodenum. These typically include gastrointestinal stromal tumors, which can be considered as malignant, and hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, which occurs in babies. Extraluminal compression can be anything from outside the lumen and more commonly due to malignant causes, such as pancreatic cancer, cholangiocarcinoma, lymphoma, and metastatic peritoneal disease, but can be due to benign causes such as pancreatic pseudocysts, superior mesenteric syndrome, and gastric volvulus. Historically, gastric outlet obstruction used to mainly result from peptic ulcer disease, which causes inflammation, edema, and strictures. However, since the introduction of proton pump inhibitors, this has been on the decline. Increasingly, gastric outlet obstruction is due to malignant causes, which now represent over 50% of all causes. Patients with gastric outlet obstruction usually present with nausea, vomiting, and bloating. The typical examination findings are a distended abdomen, tenderness on palpation, and presence of a succussion splash, which is a splashing sound heard on auscultation during shaking of the stomach. A typical complication of gastric outlet obstruction is hypokalemic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis with paradoxical aciduria. The name describes all the biochemical abnormalities of this interesting pathology, which occurs in the following events. Gastric outlet obstruction induces vomiting because the stomach contents can no longer progress forwards, and therefore can only move backwards, up the esophagus, and out as vomit. This leads to the loss of gastric acid, which is hydrochloric acid, and hence the loss of chloride, resulting in hypochloremia, plus the loss of acid in the form of hydrogen ions, resulting in metabolic alkalosis. In an attempt to correct this alkalosis, cells in the body exchange intracellular hydrogen ions for extracellular potassium ions by the hydrogen-potassium exchange channels, resulting in hypokalemia. If the body is already in metabolic alkalosis, then why are the kidneys still excreting acid? Because the primary job of the kidneys is to retain water, which it does through sodium ion retention by the sodium-potassium exchange channels. Due to the lack of potassium ions, the kidneys instead exchange hydrogen ions for sodium ions by the sodium-hydrogen exchange channels. Therefore, acid is actually excreted into the urine as hydrogen ions in exchange for retaining sodium ions and water. Even though the body is short on both potassium and hydrogen ions, potassium is more important, so hydrogen ions are sacrificed instead. So, going back to gastric outlet obstructions, the investigations for this include blood tests to assess for the previously described electrolyte abnormalities and a CT imaging to confirm the diagnosis. CT scans should also be able to determine whether the obstruction is intraluminal, mural or extraluminal. Subsequent follow-up investigations should involve an upper endoscopy and biopsies to further assess the lesions noted. The acute treatment for gastric outlet obstruction include gastric decompression with the nasogastric tube and correction of fluids, electrolytes and acid-base balance with fluids and electrolyte replacements. A definitive management plan is then required but depends on the underlying pathology. In short, foreign bodies should be removed during upper endoscopy, peptic ulcers should be treated with proton pump inhibitors, NSAID avoidance and H. pylori eradication if H. pylori is detected. Strictures should be dilated with balloon dilators during endoscopy. Polyps should be resected endoscopically. Pancreatic pseudocysts should be drained. Gastric volvulus should be operatively repaired. Benign lesions that cannot be managed non-operatively should be resected, and this may involve a subtotal gastrectomy. And malignant lesions should be staged appropriately and assessed for definitive resection or chemotherapy. Lesions that cannot be treated may require a palliative stent, commonly a self-expanding metal stent, or palliative gastrogegenostomy bypass surgery. All of these scenarios are a topic of their own, which we may explore another day. Well, I hope that you have learned something new. 
Please watch this again to reinforce your learnings because repetition is a key part of learning. And please remember to like, subscribe, share and comment for more videos.